Well, hello everyone, it's Ren here. Good to see you guys. I want to say welcome to my room, but this would be uh, really uh, pushing it this time, you know, because um, well, first of all, I'm standing because it makes it a lot easier to record this video in this room. Uh, this I'm staying at a friend's, a friend's place uh, for the weekend. I'm actually flying back to Ireland tonight. Uh, he's a French friend who lives in Paris, but he, I met him in Ireland. He lived in Ireland for like 15 years. And as you can see, <laughs> this is a, this is actually his living room, but you know, converted into a bedroom for me for the weekend. But there's a big Irish flag, so people will appreciate. Now I want to make this video today, uh, you know, um, to continue discussing, um, the question of INFJs in relation to religion, religious practice, but beyond religion, if we consider that the, that the word religion is too limiting, you know, like the, the practice of relating to the spiritual and the non-material, the transcendent, in other words. Um, I think that's an interesting topic that I want to explore in more detail. Some of your comments were really interesting and I want to come back to that. But first of all, let's, let me just say that you can't really see anything apart from this, like, Irish flag and this nice over there, there's like a nice landscape, desert landscape. But if I were to show you around the room, which I won't do because <laughs> it's uh, the mechanism, you know, like the little like setup I have for my phone is kind of fragile. I don't want to touch it, but it's really, really interestingly symbolic because uh, I, I believe Arno would tell me, uh, I don't think that I would uh, distort his views if I said that he is my friend, like that he is a, uh, probably like an agnostic humanist himself, but he's very, very open to different types of religious practice, even if they're not his own. So for example, in this very room, there's a beautiful photo of a mosque over there. Um, there's a cross down there. Uh, there's like uh, women wearing the veil, photos of women wearing the veil, you know, like uh, photos of like, uh, French cinema invol involving scantily dressed people. So it's a very diverse array of, uh, you know, interests. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you know, I think that's a, that's a very respectable uh, approach to have. Um, now, just to mention that uh, he's not an INFJ. Arno is, is very much an INFP type. A very healthy, quintessential INFP, I would say. But in any case, so uh, if we return to our topic, um, what I thought was interesting, you know, in the comments on the previous videos where I was kind of starting, you know, to explore different religious or spiritual options for INFJs, um, there's quite a lot of people, <clears throat> well, quite a lot. There's a fair number of people who explained that they were uh, Muslims, which I, I thought was really cool because I had, I didn't realize that there were so many, potentially so many Muslims following my channel. I mean, I'm assuming that they are, are uh, for the most part, they identify as INFJ as well, but, you know, INFJ Muslims, which incidentally is something that I said in my video uh, yesterday is the case of my wife, too. Uh, she is an INFJ Muslim. <coughs> um, I'm an INFJ Catholic, so um, different situation, different uh, paths but at the same time uh also a potential for huge mutual enrichment particularly when you start from the idea and i certainly from start from that idea and i think she does as well that um the abrahamic religions uh, are ultimately all types of different vocabularies towards the same truth the truth of a single god essentially um but um in my previous video i was also talking about um, how I think personally that, uh, you know, it's hard for an INFJ to have a life that is completely devoid of the question of the spirit and of transcendence. I mean, that, that's something that I strongly believe both theoretically, something that I explore in my book, the ecstatic soul. I, I can't advertise for it in this video or nor for the infinite castle, my, my new novel, because I don't have them with me, but don't forget that you can purchase them at the links below. Ecstatic Soul, Infinite Castle, both less than $10. One is a book on the INFJ personality that's become kind of, you know, widely read and, and very well reviewed. You can check out the reviews and the Infinite Castle is more like a, a novel um, in the style of like Kafka, Murakami, Dostoevsky, Camus and other, other existentialist slash modernist writers. Um, some, a lot of my readers who have read this book 
recognize an INFJ character as being the protagonist, kind of the tortured one. So probably like very much an alienated one, I would say. Like, um, well, actually, that's an, actually the question of the main character of the Infinite Castle is a really interesting one to link with the topic of this video today and the, the question of spirituality. Because you could actually argue that it's a character who is an INFJ without such pair of spirituality and he's constantly straining after it. And that what is partly the cause of his own ease and of his existential angst uh, and of his erratic and strange behavior. But you know, maybe there's something I can explore uh, in a in a future video as well, uh, with more of a focus on the book as such, uh, on the infinite castle as such. But suffice it to say that um, the NISE axis, when you have um, an SE function that's in the inferior slot, the um, the distanciation from the world of the purely imminent and material is something that is almost going to be an automatic position for INFJs uh, versus the worlds of what you might describe as transcendent symbols. The world of the transcendent function, you know, as, as, as Jung calls it, uh, is something that's going to be very familiar and, uh, and also links back to NI and, and, and the various roles that a function occupies in the life of an INFJ. NI is not really a function that when you are really in NI mode, uh, it's not really a function that connects you to the hard, brute facts of the material world. You know, I think we can all agree that this is not what NI does. Um, and so if we accept the premise that an INFJ may be alienated from the external world. What they do not want is to be alienated from their main function. This is something that probably is a catastrophe in any possible scenario. Um, the INFJ is going to want to remain connected to some of the principal symbolic vocabularies and worldviews that attach to the NI function. And that implies almost of necessity a connection with the, the spiritual. Now, um, that does not answer the question, um, what, which is the best approach and what is the best approach to the transcendent uh, for an INFJ if we accept here together that INFJ is given the particular makeup, perhaps by virtue of being human, because perhaps that is the lot of all humans, regardless of type, um, need the transcendent in their lives, okay? They need uh, something that re raises them beyond just the everyday circumstances, you know, of their wages, of their jobs, of the the places they visit, going to shops, uh, dating people, and um, things like that. They need something that transcends all this, you know, that reaches into a realm that isn't um, that moves beyond, you know, the the everyday concreteness. Um, and I strongly believe this. I think that an INFJ who doesn't have that is going to be like the main character in my book, The Infinite Castle. You know, perhaps that is an interesting new perspective to bring, not just for myself, but also for those who have read the book or are considering reading the book. You know, maybe that would bring an interesting angle. Because I, I think that when I was reading, or when I was writing The Infinite Castle, I think I, w I was kind of very much in an NI mode where I knew that I was touching on something important, but I didn't quite know what it was about. You know, my, my hand was kind of just going and I was writing and and now now I'm kind of like, okay, I think that's what I was touching, you know, touching on. Um, I can rationalize something that at the time was intuitive. So it's kind of almost a cliche INFJ thing to do. And I actually think that's what happened with Infinite Castle, now that I think about it. But so you have different paths possible here. You can be alienated from the external world, uh, kind of re a recluse within the NI sort of little inner realm, which can be an issue if it becomes an echo chamber. You can be alienated, like, like the character in the Infinite Castle, from the NI function and then chained to the external world, almost as if um, you were in a perpetual state of an SE grip. You know, like again, you could ar actually argue that the main character in the Infinite Castle is almost perpetually in an SE grip, like clearly not an ESTP, but and yet still in, in the grip of the SE function and clearly not functional as in, in the way that it should be in the relationship to the external world, even though it is taking priority in the mind of that person over NI, 
because SE is always going to remain inferior and therefore archaic and fantile, the character is in a state of perpetual fascination with the external world and does not relate to it in the way that a normal functioning adult would, you know. Um, and hopefully I explore that well. So that's another path. Uh, now, a third path is to um, have transcendence um, whilst also engaging with the external world. And ideally, you, you like to think, well, could 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 a complete INFJ, could, could uh, the ideal type for an INFJ be of a type that is able to combine the need for transcendence and also the groundedness in the imminent? Because the thing, the thing about the, the, the transcendent is that um, if you're only the transcendent, that creates the risk of the echo chamber, whereby you also might cut yourself off from society in some ways. And that is not necessarily a good thing, you know, because you do need to engage with other people. Uh, you do need to live uh, the imminent side of your life as well in order to live a happy life. And it's tempting for an, a strong NI dominant and NI user to convince themselves that they don't need this. They can be a hermit, whether uh, literally or metaphorically, and they can live with a world of symbols and that's all they need. And maybe a few online friends. Well, I don't think that that leads to anything uh, very productive uh, or eventually satisfying and happy for, for an INFJ. I mean, something to add to that is that, how to put this, if you've read in the, the Ecstatic Soul, my book on the INFJ, you will know that actually a further argument I make, which is probably one of the bolder arguments I make, and I thought it would, it would ruffle feathers more than maybe it did. People appreciated the argument. They seem to accept it or find it stimulating more so than were tempted to reject it. Is this idea that someone who remains in the echo chamber of NI um, and so devalues SE, does not engage in SE, does not engage in FE either, um, in a way they end up impoverishing their own NI. So it's, it's almost a self uh, defeating strategy. You think that you're remaining in the world of NI, but you're actually shrinking it more and more and more until you become just a point, you know? Um, and I mean, really, I mean, I make a somewhat intricate argument in the book and I use philosophy for that and I use for hopefully some good rationality as well, but it's, all, it's, it's actually quite simple. I mean, if you think about it, it's really a matter of um, looking at the NI function in terms of a pairing with the SE function, because the function, uh, perceptual functions are always pairs, they're in pairs. FE functions with TI, FI functions with TE, SE functions with NI, NE functions with SI. NI has nothing to work with without inputs from SE. You know, this is something that I like to say. And I believe that access to SE is best facilitated through engaging the FE function which is the more communal and social dimension of, of, of the energy life, which could suffer from being devalued by someone, to, an energy who's only after transcendence and completely devalues imminence. Because the fact of the matter is the social aspect and the relational aspect and the communal aspect of life is not spiritual. It might be around a spiritual practice. It might be around a, a religious faith. It might also be around an atheistic humanist enterprise uh, because in the comments, you know, there were also uh, Coleman, for example, like had some very interesting posts where he explained that for him, he's not religious, but you could, you, it's clear, and Coleman can correct me in these comments here if I'm wrong, but I think where he finds transcendence is in the moral life, a, a moral life lived and activated uh, ethical in such a way as to reach beyond just the you know ordinary everyday uh, existence, the aesthetic mode of life, as Kierkegaard would call it. But he doesn't think that it has to reach into the domain of the religious, unlike Kierkegaard. He thinks the ethical it can stay there and orient itself humanistically, and that's enough. That's enough transcendence for him. Um, clearly, for the Muslim, uh, for my Muslim viewers, that component exists, but it also is. Oh, there's an overarching. Um, you know, Islamic framework that uh, comes on top and you know, it's going to happen with, with Christians and Catholics. And uh, interestingly, the Christians and Catholics uh, or Jewish, you know, they, they are not very visible in my comment section at the moment. It's much more uh, either humanists who are maybe in a more so like agnostic tradition or, uh, or Muslims. And it's very, very interesting. I'm trying to wrap my head around that because I still want to get to a stage where I discuss like what I think is the best approach. I think that, yes, you know, 
it's possible to live a life where you have a the transcendence occupies the place you need it i think hopefully we can agree on that it's not clear yet whether we we uh, we need this transcendence uh, element in our life to be religious to or to be spiritual in a broader sense you know maybe slightly new agey sense without i don't mean this in a derogatory, derogatory way or if it can be like uh, something that is purely ethical you know reaching the transcendent through uh uh higher moral goods as as charles taylor would would put it um i still also want to touch on the idea that you can be technically alienated but still be relatively peaceful or you can be embodied and not peaceful it's something that i haven't really had a chance to touch on so this might have to wait for next weekend um, and looking at different types of religions that i think intrinsically and I like this hypothesis that I will be sharing with you next weekend because it's going to be controversial and not everybody is going to agree with it. But that's, well, that's what's interesting. It's going to spark some discussion. I've actually come to think, and uh, this is the big reveal or the big teaser, teaser in advance of next week. I think insofar as an IMG is going to be religious, I do think that there are certain forms and certain uh, churches, or I shouldn't say churches because, you know, we can't, can't say like the... Muslim church, yeah, that, that's ridiculous. Uh, so forget about it. I didn't mean to use the word church, but there are certain uh, types of religion and certain types of belief and doctrine and, and particularly um, embodied uh, religious lived life that I suspect are, from the point of view of the Anishis well-being, uh, better suited. Not to say there can be exceptions, but it's something I strongly believe at this point. And uh, certainly I think, you know, uh, Islam is one of them. Um, I don't think just Islam is one of them, but I think Islam is one of them. And hopefully we can sort of explore why I think that in the next video and talk about some of the other candidates as well. But uh, listen, uh, I, uh, I ramble quite a bit at the moment. This is my style. Hopefully you still had something that you were able to, to, to take from this video. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you next week. Now, I will be back to, to the Irish room next week anyway. And there for, for uh, at least, you know, sometime uh, between now and the end of the year so we'll see uh don't forget you can support me on patreon guys um at the moment you know i have the highest number of patron patrons that i've ever had so thank you so much always need more help you know and if you can contribute three four dollars a month you know that's beautiful if you can't and your support just watching the video is already fantastic but consider it you know there's a link to my patreon page and i'm planning on releasing more specific video content for my patrons as well as a way to thank them and to to also like kind of refine my thoughts in advance of then releasing videos to, to the public uh, on, on YouTube. But anyway, have a look and I'll see you next week. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, guys. Bye-bye.